All right, have and have not fans. Now, this is kind of a follow up video from the one I did. Um, are the criers really dead? And at the time of this recording, the video was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, around 24 to 26,000 hits. So, hopefully, 30,000, uh, you know, within the next couple of days. So, thank you all so much for that. The channel is definitely booming, uh, not just because of the finale, but because it seems that YouTube has. And I don't want to jinx it. They finally, uh, you know, fixed the algorithm with the notification bell. And uh, I don't know the ins and outs, but it looks like a lot of people have been getting my videos when they've been posted recently. Now, I know a lot of people are probably saying, well, Jeremy, in the video, in not only the episode review, but then in the video, Are the Criers Really Dead? You brought up the subject of why it dreaming, why it hallucinating, uh, whatever drugs that RK gave him, uh, gave him the illusion that he acted out his threats, not just threats, but promises to go around the house killing his parents and then offing himself. But to be honest, uh, he didn't off himself himself. The cops did it. But even then, I don't even think it was a um, shot to a vital area, but a shot to like his upper torso to incapacitate him because he held the gun up. But the only reason I'm doing this video is because whenever the cast members um, respond to fan comments with something very interesting then I talk about it someone on Instagram and shout out to Candace tattoo for um, sending this to me so somebody's like uh, so you didn't die never know could be shooting a dream sequence a montage or something else could be shooting no pun intended a dream sequence a montage or something else this is what I would love to see. Now, I know a lot of people are saying it will be a huge cop out, but it actually makes sense. I don't see Tyler. And look, guys, I know I could be completely wrong here. Tyler Perry could definitely do something we didn't expect or I didn't expect and kill off a multitude of characters. I mean, it, it, it could. I mean, he did. He did it before, but not with main characters, more like secondary characters. Remember, he killed off. Erica, Melissa, and Oscar within the span of two episodes. And then the question of who's the replacement characters, which will be another video if I do soon. But I think that whenever a cast member says something like this, it's definitely worthy of note. Now, that doesn't mean Aaron is spoiling things. It's just that he's answering the question. Now, once again, he could be telling what's the phrase hiding in plain sight or what uh what do some people say the truth is always the hardest thing to believe honestly i wouldn't mind it i think it would make a lot of sense and it, it begs the question of what the heck kind of drugs was rk giving wyatt i mean because he was like man is this all you give me wait this is less than the last time and we know that why is an addict i mean hell even mitch said you know get help rk didn't even want to give him a second bag because he's like you need to get some help um even though this isn't really relevant but i think we should go back to the time where Wyatt was in jail and he was about to perform a sexual favor to justin in order to get the drugs and going back even further do you think if wyatt wasn't assaulted in jail by toxic remember when veronica set that up Remember, what if he wasn't assaulted by Toxic? Do you think he still would have performed those sexual acts on Justin for drugs? Do you, I mean, look, I, I know that like Dave Chappelle and like Key and Peele, like other comedians and sketches and whatnot would, you know, talk about, you know, addicts doing sexual acts for drugs. If why it got it that bad, dang. That, I, I think even Justin had his phone out ready to record just to show how pathetic he was. But if it wasn't for Jim, he was going to perform the sexual acts just to get the hit. And the reason I'm bringing back the Justin thing is the fact that Justin kept saying, man, we got some bad stuff in the back. We took from some guys we put in here not too long ago, but this stuff is strong. It could possibly kill you. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I do believe that Justin like showed the drug yeah that's right he did show the drugs to Wyatt and then you know Jim was like check his pockets and he wouldn't do it I um his uh the police chief or whatever I think that Wyatt was complaining about the size of the bag but Ju Justin was like look this is some strong stuff it could probably kill you now once again I don't really know the ins and outs of drugs but we do know Wyatt is capable of doing a lot Wh what did he say he had five thousand dollars worth of drugs that he did 
um, when Vinny gave him those drugs and then he didn't have the money the next morning. So, I mean, Wyatt is like a Bobby Brown contender. Like, who who knows how far he can go with that? You know, no, no offense to Bobby Brown. I'm talking like, you know, early, what, like early 90s or, you know, Bobby and Whitney era. Not the Bobby now because I'm proud of Bobby Brown. He's lost a lot of weight. Apparently, he's been off, you know, alcohol and whatnot for a while. So, you know, kudos to him. But the reason I'm bringing that up is, we don't know what RK is capable of. I'm just saying, like, you know, the people he's running with, they could probably give him some small amount. For all we know, he probably purposely gave Wyatt a small bag because he knows that Wyatt has it bad. So he probably, like, took it easy on him. But Wyatt, I, like, again, I don't really know the ins and outs of the cold turkey thing. You know, like, wait, Jeremy, there, like you just said, there have been plenty of times where Wyatt is taking way more drugs than whatever RK gave him. Like, what about the time he overdosed at the Sarandon Hotel? Uh, what about the time he went to that crack house and then hit Benny Young and Little Lizzie? And, and there are so many times where he's taken drugs before. Why is it just now that he's hallucinating? A uh, dramatic effect. Maybe Tyler Perry wanted to try something new. And to be completely honest, I think that's a good way of going about the story as opposed to him just doing the same old thing where, oh, Wyatt, you know, he's going to get caught by his parents high or maybe he overdoses again. Then he's back in the hospital and yada, yada, yada. No, let's change things up. And I want to throw this out here. Maybe Tyler Perry did this whole dream sequence montage on purpose because he knew that, hey, we're going to have a six month break for the haves and the have nots. And I need a cliffhanger that's really big, something that's going to keep people talking for months. Because remember, I could be wrong, but by memory, this is the longest break for the haves and the have nots we're going to have. Because uh, my estimation is that it will return on January the 7th or the 14th, which would be either the first or second Tuesday in 2020. So it is July 8th now, so we have literally more or less six months for the show to come back. And to have a cliffhanger like that, I think that was a great way to go. I, I, I mean, to be honest, here's another good question. Let's say hypothetically, this season ended like on uh, July the 2nd. Let's say the cliffhanger was when David drowned Veronica. And then you have the alternative where the cliffhanger would have been what we just saw with all the criers getting shot. What do you think would have been more frustrating? We take a six month break. Then we come back in 2020. Oh my God, Veronica's alive because she was a former lifeguard and knew how to fake her own drowning. Well, not her own drowning, but you know, Veronica drowning her or why hallucinating things from the drugs. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I prefer the criers being shot because we've had too many cliffhanger endings for a season where Veronica allegedly died. What was it last year when she was tossed off the balcony uh, the year before when she got in the car wreck with Melissa and we didn't need a third time of her being drowned. Now, I think that the drowning thing was definitely dramatic, but I think it would have definitely pissed off a lot of fans if we go to 2020 and then she just gets out of the water. I think the dream sequence was definitely more impactful due to the fact that um, I feel like more people are talking about Catherine begging for her life before being shot than anything else. And for good reason, that was a well acted scene. But the fact that Aaron brought up the montage thing, I love it. And it goes back to how I hope Tyler Perry definitely did things way in advance. For example, let's say if we finally get, finally get closure on the Amanda murder. I would love a montage of going back to the night of the shooting. What happened? We had Amanda running through. What what made Amanda go from running back and forth between Catherine and Wyatt's room to her going back to her room? Because remember, the blood splatter was all over the room, but there wasn't a single drop of blood in the hallway or nothing. The only thing that I think may have led blood out of the room was when Hannah woke up, well, excuse me, when Hannah went to Amanda's room the next morning to open the shades and everything, and then she saw Amanda's body. She was standing in blood and everything, So when she, and then she had blood on her hands. So when she went down to the kitchen and whatnot to tell Selene to give her the phone, she was covered with blood. So I imagine that on the bottom of her shoes, she had blood tracing down the stairs and everything. And if you go to Wyatt and Selene going into the room as well, you see there's blood splatter like on the doorway, but there's nothing in outside of the room. So... Whoever shot Amanda did so while she was in her room and 
why it could have been the one. I really don't think it was him, though. Uh, but I do think that we really need to have a flashback montage of that. Similar to the whole, hey, what about Oscar? What if the FBI finds out about Candace killing him? I think I would love to see on the video footage if Oscar is, you know, walking in the hallway with Candace and stuff like that. That's stuff that Tyler Perry could have filmed way in advance and the perfect way of bringing back deceased characters, if only for nothing but a flashback or, you know, camera work montage or whatever. So I think the dream sequence is or hallucin hallucination is definitely a way to go. And one little thing I forgot to mention in the why did George show up to the um, Catherine's house? I said it was because, well, remember, the Criers and Harringtons were indicted, so they could have been arrested at any time, which explains why George and the police just showed up. Some people made some good points. It's like, well, Jeremy, remember that Catherine, Catherine was talking on the phone to Derek, and we can most likely assume that Jim was talking to David on the phone based off the dialogue. So we know that neither one of them had the chance to really hang up the phone because Jim was mid-sentence before, you know, he heard White, you know, prepare the gun to fire. And he was screaming, no, why? And then the gunshot went off. Then the phone dropped. So what if David called the cops to go check on him? And then you have Catherine on the phone with Derek. And, you know, she got up and ran, went back to the bathroom. Derek could have heard the conversation of Catherine begging for a life, then the gun going off. So he could have called the cops as well. But it, it, it once again, guys, I could be wrong, but it seemed to me that everything happened within moments of each other. It wasn't a situation where Wyatt shot Jim. Now we're going to time lapse 10 minutes to when Catherine runs down the stairs. I think all this happened within the span of only a couple of minutes. So there have been, I think Veronica even said like the cops in this town don't move fast unless they have a warrant or whatever ready to arrest someone. But I doubt that, uh, you know, Derek and David, you know, called the cops to go check on Jim. I'm not saying that they didn't, but I don't think they would have shown up that fast. I mean, technically plot convenience, but I really do think the reason that George and the cops showed up was simply to arrest the criers. And I do think that some people point out, well, since when does the DA go for arrest? Remember, this is a personal mission of George's to take them down. So it does it doesn't surprise me that he would personally go with a couple of cops to, you know, pretty much arrest the criers as revenge for taking out one of their own aka jennifer salison so i just wanted to kind of plug that into the end of this video but guys thank you all so much for supporting the channel I just, even when we don't agree or you know with me either if you don't agree with me or with each other i like that the videos are getting a lot more comments now that shows that we're really talking and uh yeah i got some ambition videos in the wing as well as the green leaf trailer breakdown but the haves and the have nots, there's still so much to talk about. Like, I'm looking at my list now. I still got like 12 videos to do. But thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I think by the time this video goes up, we should be at 85,000 subscribers, meaning 15,000 more to go. I know we can and we will hit 100,000 soon. So once again, thanks so much. Do you think that Wyatt was hallucinating? Would, I, would you be mad? I can understand people being upset, but I honestly think... It makes the most sense. So be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, comment your thoughts, and I'll talk to you soon. Congratulations on making it to the end of this video. If you like what you just saw, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Or if you have anything you would like to add to the video, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to keep up with me on social media, go to the description box. All of my links for social media are right there. Also, if you feel like you would like to donate to the channel, make sure to click on the link to PayPal. Any amount helps, a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars. As a full-time YouTuber, any support from my fans really does mean a lot to me. Finally, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you're kept up to date on any new content I post to the channel. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you in the next video.